It is 6 o'clock in the morning. Doors to the Metropolitan Museum of Art open in four hours. Mummies with wide eyes are watching suspicious people in the Great Hall. They don't look like curators. Hi. Oh, you really uh, want yeah, to shake uh, my hand? Uh, yeah, okay, hi. Remco Van Fleet's hand has already been in the mud and paint. After 20 years working for the museum, the Met's chief floral designer is used to having dirty hands. The ritual of making bouquets is repeated every Tuesday. It used to be that the museum was closed on Monday, so that's why we used to install it on Monday, because then we had the entire morning to do it. But now we have to, we're here with a big crew, we're here with six, seven people, just to get the flowers done in time before the guests come uh, to visit uh, the museum. Among the many masterpieces exhibited in the Met Museum, five catch our eye immediately at the entrance. In the Great Hall, there are four niches that uh, contain these beautiful flower arrangements that are redone once a week. And we also have, in the center of the Great Hall, uh, the, uh, this, this beautiful centerpiece here. Uh, the visitors are astounded when they walk in the doors. They don't expect that they're going to see something living and fresh. This tradition is made possible by a generous gift from Met Museum patron Lila Acheson Wallace from the family that created the Reader's Digest publishing empire. Her inspiration continues with a bequest from her estate and support from her descendants enabling these florists to create their own art. She established an endowment that would provide for fresh flowers to always be in the Great Hall because she wanted our visitors to have living beauty when they came into the museum. Remco Van Fleet uses the power of his imagination to fulfill Wallace's wish, creating beautiful floral displays for more than 20 years. I like the flowers to reflect the time of the year. So in the springtime, which is my favorite time of the year, we have all these beautiful Japanese uh, cherry blossoms. Summertime, uh, we use a lot of tropical flowers from South America, from Africa. Fall, we use a lot of uh, local foliage as a base. We even put a big pumpkin here, right in the center of So we need professional riggers, which they have plenty of here in the museum. In winter, of course, it's more difficult to choose colors for a masterpiece. A sturdy camellia, chilled hydrangeas, a silver fern. There are no tulips in this modest Dutchman's floral palette. They are too short. And no lilies. They're too fragrant. Born in Holland, Van Fleet is a third-generation florist. He doesn't need business cards. The floral displays at the Met are proof of his great skill. He spent half his life on this ladder. I prefer not to do too much color contrasting. I prefer to make the arrangement elegant, pleasing uh, to the eye. The huge arrangements in the museum's great hall and the generosity of Mrs. Wallace are now part of the permanent collection at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. When I know when a flower arrangement is done, is it, it's something that you feel. It's the same like if you make a painting. Just by adding more paint to, to the canvas doesn't mean it's going to look better. The holiday tradition of creating floral art to frame a museum's masterpieces has been copied at other collections around the world. In New York, that shared experience of fragrant beauty and art continues throughout the year. For Elena Wolf and Max Avlashenko, I'm Bob Leveroni, VOA News, New York.